Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Art Made Simple. My name is Chevron Edwards and today I will be teaching you how to do a monochromatic painting. Now, a lot of times persons see art as very difficult, art as complicated, but a lot of times it's the way it is taught. It's just like the other subjects, like mathematics. Sometimes if you have the wrong math teacher, it just doesn't work out. So, today I will be teaching you how to do a monochromatic painting, which is this. Alright? So, a monochromatic painting is simply a painting that is done using one color. Now, while you see black and white in this painting, I want you to pay attention. Black and white are not colors. They are tints and shades. Alright? So, the color that is actually in this painting is blue. We just have different shades of blue. Alright? So, in order to do this exercise, we're going to need the following items. We're going to need three different sizes of brushes. If you're a professional or if you've painted before, you can manipulate one brush to do the same exercise. But I recommend using three different brushes, a small one, medium, and a large brush. All right, that should take you right through the exercise. In addition to the brushes, you're gonna need three paints, white, black, and blue. All right, other than that, you're going to need your water container, your protective clothing, your palette, of course. If you don't have a palette, you can always use a plate. I mean, my mom used to argue with me a lot of times about using the plates from the kitchen. So you can use your mom's plate, but don't tell her that I told you to do it. And then finally, we're going to need our paper. This is an 8x8 eight eight sheet of cartridge paper. Fairly simple. And tape to hold on the paper. Alright? That's basically it. So, let's get right into it. Okay, so the first step is to do the horizon line. You do the horizon line by simply adding blue to white and getting a light tone and running it horizontally across the paper. It can be a little above half or just at half, doesn't really matter. Just ensure that you have a straight and nice line. Okay, for this section, you might notice I'm moving really quickly. That's because acrylic dries really fast. And in order to get a smooth gradient with the paint, we have to move quickly. Now, adding water to the paint helps to get it smooth. But because we're using paper, we don't want it to move to be too moist. Because that will cause the paper to start crumpling and you don't want that to happen. So, what I'm basically doing is transitioning from white to blue. And that will give you the nice gradient for the sky. So the horizon line should be the lightest, moving upwards to go darker into the blue. All right, let's continue. Oh. 
Okay, so our next step is to add the clouds. Now we want to add the clouds while the sky is still moist. That way we'll get a nice blend and a smooth transition. We don't want a flat white for our clouds. We want there to be some variations and some gradients in the clouds as well. So we can use any brush for this. I'm currently using a fan brush, but I will soon switch to a flat brush to get a different effect. All right, so let's go. Okay, so we're doing our clouds now, but a lot of persons sometimes get frustrated when their clothes have a different shape, or it's not looking the way their references look, or even not looking the way mine look. Now, don't worry about that. Remember, clothes are organic shapes, which means they don't have a definite form. They are natural shapes, and they can look any way. I mean, some persons even see shapes that look like elephants, donkeys, clothes, whatever. The fact of the matter is, you just want it to have a nice smooth gradient different variations all right so just have fun you can put the clothes anywhere you want them to go and they will be fine all right Now the next step is to add our sun. Our sun is going to be a simple semicircle or half of a circle. And because we're doing a monochromatic painting, we're going to use the lightest tone in this painting, which would be white. All right, let's go. Once you've added the sun, it's time to move into the water. Now the water will be done in a left to right motion. We're basically using just our wrist. So we'll be flicking our wrist left to right in kind of a wavy motion, but not too wavy. We don't want it to look too cartoonish. So we're gonna move left to right, left to right. Now for this, we're going to be transitioning between different shades of blue. For the middle section, we're going to keep it as light as possible because it would be reflecting the sun. So we're going to keep the darker tones on the outside. All right, let's go. For this section as well, we want to use just the tips of the brush because if we press on the brush, we're going to get too broad of a stroke. We want thin strokes, nice thin strokes. So in order to get that, we have to use just the tip of the brush. All right. So don't press too hard on your brush. Now, before we complete our water, we're going to add the landmass. Now, this is just so we know where to stop for the waves. 
and how to add our details to the water. Now for this section, you're going to be mixing the blue with the black. We don't want to use the raw black for the island. So we're gonna add a little blue to the black. Be easy on the black because we don't want it to dominate the blue and we're just gonna draw in the island. All right, for this you can use a bigger brush if you wish. Okay, so for this section now, as we move closer to the middle, right in front of the sun, we want to add lighter tones in that area. So we're going to add a little white to our mixture and just use lighter waves for that section. Let's go. Okay, so you saw me using some raw blue there. That was just to create some more contrast between the highlighted section of the water and the darker sections of the water. All right, so next thing we're going to do, we're going to move to the sun. We're going to be using raw white for the sun just to add some emphasis and create more contrast between the sun and the other elements in the picture. We're also going to be using white on the clouds to ensure that we have the same reflection of the sun on the clouds. All right, let's go. So it's time for us to add the trees. 
For this section, I recommend you use a thin brush. If you don't have a thin brush, what you can do, you can turn your flat brush vertically and just use the tip of that brush. All right, so we're gonna start drawing our trees now. We need to use just the tips of the brush. Be careful with it. Try to make the black paint as watery as possible and you will get smoother lines and easier. It's easier to handle the brush that way. All right, let's go. For this next step, it's very critical that you have your paint as watery as possible, that is your black paint. Because what we're going to be doing now, we're going to be drawing the branches and adding the leaves for the coconut tree. It can be tricky if your paint is too watery or if you have too much paint in the brush. For this section, we just want to use the tips, use the smallest brush in your pack, and let's get this done. Alright, let's go. The leaves can be very tricky, so I recommend that you practice on a piece of paper before doing it on your actual piece. Another piece of paper can do you well, helping you understand the technique and get the hang of the brush before you do it on the real thing. Alright, so it doesn't hurt to practice. Let's continue.
okay so here's our finished piece if you notice it's looking a lot brighter now that's because i took the photo with my phone so i, I hope you enjoyed this exercise and you were able to execute the task I would love to see your paintings so you can send them to me via email or you can send them via WhatsApp. I'll leave my contact information down below. Also, I will be featuring the best paintings in my next video. So be sure to send your painting to me. All right, that's basically it. So you've successfully completed a monochromatic painting and the painting video was done in real time so that you can see the process actually happening all right i intentionally didn't time lapse this because i wanted to follow step by step and i didn't skip anything all right so you get to see the painting come together so that's the goal of this youtube channel to make art simple and to break it down for even the dummies so let's all have some fun keep practicing i'll be posting another video on painting again a little bit more difficult a little for a little bit more of a challenge for those persons who think that this was too easy we're gonna be taking this on next one all right see you next time